Shalom, everyone. We begin with just a little bit of music to get us settled. We're ready to celebrate the day. Shabbat Shalom, everyone, and welcome to the Shabbat morning service, where, among other things, we are celebrating the fact that Nia Bialki is becoming a bat mitzvah, and we are thrilled to be with her and her family, and we will have the inviting members of her family and Nia to participate, but we're going to begin just warming up. You know, it's very difficult to walk into a service. It's even more difficult when it's on our computer screens. Uh, and so we need to kind of ease into prayer. We're all in different places, and yet we are united as one in celebration of our bat mitzvah, Mia, and we're thrilled to celebrate with her. So we're going to begin with our physical selves, our, our bodies. We woke up this morning. We're here. And so we pray, my body is a mystery, so strong, so fragile, it can suffer great pain endure to reach triumph, but a small moment can bring collapse and death. My body is a mystery, a gift of intricacy and beauty, powerful, endowed with the ability to take light and air and food and make them into energy and action. What then is my life? How then will I use this gift? Well, I will thank you for your kindness and abundance. I will treasure the moments of strength and vigor. I will surrender to moments of weakness and distress. God, who provides sustenance and health, you are the source of life. Baruch atah Adonai, rofechol basar umafli la'asot. Blessed are you, Adonai, who heals all flesh, working wondrously. Now we transition to our spiritual selves. That peace of God that we believe resides inside each and every one of us. Elohai neshama shenatata bi tehorahi. My God, the soul that you have given me.
we've given thanks for our physical self, for our spiritual self, but we also know that we're not just bodies who, that work, but that we also can think, that we can learn, that we can grow. So there's a blessing in Judaism for everything, including a blessing for study. So join with me. Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam. Asher kitshanu b'mitzvotav v'tzivanu la'asok b'divrei Torah. Blessed are you, Adonai, our God, sovereign of the universe, who hallows us with mitzvot, commanding us to engage with words of Torah. And now, we combine all of the gratitude for our physical selves, for our spiritual selves, for our intellectual selves, into this one word, hallelujah, let us praise God. my privilege and my pleasure to call upon Mia Bialki to lead us in worship on the Shabbat when we celebrate her becoming a bat mitzvah. Mia, it's all yours. Please rise as you are able for the bar hu. Yai la 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 Yai la 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 Yai la 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 yeah, I'm a lie, 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 lie. Yeah, I'm a lie, 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 lie. Yeah, I'm a lie, 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 lie. Yeah, I'm a lie, 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 lie. Yeah, I'm a lie, 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 lie. Bar who et adonai, hamevora, baru, Baruch Ata Adonai, Eloheinu Melech HaOlam, Yotzer Or Uvorei Choshech, Ose Shalom Uvorei Et Hako, Chameir Laaretz Velada Rim Alecha Barachamim, Uvtuvo Mechadesh Bechol Yom Tamid, Maase Vereshit, Ma Rabu Maasecha Adonai, Kulam Bechochma Asita, Malach Haaretz Kinyanecha, Tit Barach Adonai Eloheinu, Al Shavach Maase Yadecha, Ve Al Meore or Shi Asita, Yefa Arucha Selach, Or Hadash Al Sion Tair, Veniz Ke Hulanu Mehera Le Oro, Barucha Ta Adonai, Yotzer Hame Orot. God, inspiration and guide for all, you have spoken in a thousand tongues for us to hear. In every land and every age, your children have heard you and imagined you in separate ways, and yet God, you are one, unifier of humanity. 
We give thanks for the sages and teachers who bring us understanding of your will. Gratefully, we recall the lawgivers and prophets, the psalmists and sages of Israel. And joyfully, we remember that from the dawn of Israel's life, we would turn to you and find purpose. May the teachings of our ancestors live on in our minds and their passion for righteousness stir our hearts. Help us to live so that our daily conduct reveals the beauty and wisdom of your truth. Baruch atah Adonai, chabal her ba'amo Yisrael ba'achava. Shema Yisrael Adonai Eloheinu, Adonai Echad. Shema Yisrael Adonai Eloheinu, Adonai Echad. Baruch Shem Kevod, Shem Kevod Machuto, Le'olam Va'ed. Baruch Shem Kevod, Shem Kevod Machuto, Le'olam Va'ed. Shema Yisrael Adonai Eloheinu, Adonai Echad. Shema Yisrael Adonai Eloheinu, Adonai Echad. Ve'ahavta et Adonai Elohecha, Be'chol levavcha uv'chol nafshecha, uv'chol me'odecha. Ve'chayu ha'varim ha'ele, Asher anochi mitzavcha chayom oliva vecha, veshinantam levanecha, vidibarta bam, veshivtecha bevitecha, uflechtecha vaderech, ufshochbacha ufkumecha, ukshartam le ot al yadecha, vechayu le totafot bein enecha. Uktavtam al mezuzot betecha uvisharecha. Leman tiskiru vasitem et kol mitzvotai. Vitem kedoshim lelohechem. Ani adonai lohechem. Asher hotseti et chem me eretz mitzrayim. Liot lachem lelohim. Ani adonai lohechem. Sing the song of men and women joined in understanding and respect, the song of God's miracles in earth protected and cherished, a gift for our children and the generations to come. The song of a land once ravished by war, now quiet and content, her soldiers home to leave no more. The song of a world redeemed, the song of peace. <laughs> Nora te hilot o se fele, Nora te hilot o se fele. Rock of Israel, rise in support of Israel and redeem Judah and Israel as you promised. Our Redeemer Adonai Tzivao is your name. Blessed are you Adonai for redeeming Israel. Baruch ata Adonai ga'al Yisrael. We continue with the tefillah. Please rise physically or spiritually. Adonai sifatai tiftah ufi agid sehila teha Adonai sifatai tiftah ufi agid sehila teha Open up my lips, let, let my mouth declare your praise Adonai sifatai tiftah ufi agid tehilatecha. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu v'elohe avotenu v'imotenu. Elohe avraham elohe yitzak v'elohe yaakov. Elohe Sara, Elohe Rivka, Elohe Rachel, Elohe Leia, Ha El Hagado, Hagibor Vichanura, El El Yon, Gomel Hasadim Tovim, Vikone Hako, Vizoher Haste, Avot Vimaho, Umevi Gula, Livne Venehem, Leman Shemo Bachava, Melech Ozer Umoshia Umagin, Baruchata Adonai, Magain Avraham the Ezrat Sarah Atagi Borleo Lamadonai Mechaye Hako Atara Vlahoshia 
Mashiv Haruch Omorid Hagashem, Mechalkel Chaim Bechesed, Mekaye Hako Barachamim Rabim, So Mech Nuflim Virofe Cholim, Uma Tira Surim, Um Kayem Emunato Lishene Afar, Nicham Ochaba Agu who wrote, Umi do melach, melech me meet, um chaye, umat me ochuach. Vene emnon ata le chayot hako, baruchata adonai, me chaye hako. Nekadesh et shimcha ba olam, ke shem shemakdishim o tobish me maram, kakatuv el yad nevi echa. The Karaze Elze the Amar Kadosh 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 Adonai Tivaot Molo Koha Aretz Kavodo Adir Adi Renu Adonai Adonenu Ma Adir Shim Habe Hoha Aretz Baruch Kuvod Adonai Mim Komo Echarhu Eloheinu, Hu Avinu, Hu Malkeinu, Hu Moshi Enu, Vichu Yashmi Enu, Barachamav le Ene Kohai, Ani Adonai Elohechem, Yim Loch Adonai Leolam, Elohai Yechzion, Ledor Vador, Hallelujah. Le dor vador nagid god lecha, unitzak nesachim kiru sharcha nakdish, vishivchach, vishivchacha elohenu, mepinu lo yamush, le olam vaed, barucha ta adonai, ha el ha kadosh. To all generations we will make known your greatness, and to all eternity proclaim your holiness. Your praise, God, shall never depart from our lips. Baruch atah Adonai ha'el ha'kadosh. Awesome. You can smile, Mia. It's okay. That was a great job. Let's take a moment now and move away from the prayers that other people have written and find those prayers that are imprinted in our hearts. As we look within, we're there to find God, and we pray in silence.
continue now with Sefer Kriyata Torah, the service for the reading of the Torah. And before we begin, I want to share a couple of things with you. Those of you who are familiar with coming to bar and bat mitzvah services at Temple Emmanuel know that they usually take place in our beautiful chapel. And there's a story that I want to tell you about our chapel, which you now see on the screen in front of you. You'll notice that it is a room that has, it's both modern and it also has a lot of tradition and history in it. Uh, this room contains, um, it, it contains artifacts from our congregation's history. The two chairs, as you look in front of you, you see the green arc, the two chairs on the right of that come from one of our very first buildings. Our congregation is almost 150 years old. And so we have many beautiful artifacts, the two lamps on either side of the bima also, as well as the reading desk. But there are nine pieces of furniture in our chapel that I want to talk about. And those are the ark that you see in front of you, the Ten Commandments above that, the parapet above that to its immediate left, there is a chair, a stender chair. It's like a little box with a chair of a chair. To the left of that <coughs> is a Torah holder. There are two other green stender chairs. And well, in, as behind us, you can't see, but there are two candelabrum. All nine of these pieces of furniture come from a community in Czechoslovakia called Kolin. And we know from our research that the city of Kolin had a long and a proud Jewish history prior to World War II, there were approximately 464 Jewish souls in Kolin. Well, following the war, only 44 survived. You see, as the Nazis marched through Eastern Europe, Hitler had a very specific task set out for a group called the Einsatzgruppen. This, this group's job was whenever they came to a new community of Jews, to gather them together, and either murder them on the spot or send them off to the death camps and the ghettos in Poland. And then they would go to the synagogues. And before they burned them, they would strip them of anything of value that they could find, gold, silver, tapestries, furniture. And the Nazis also took the Torah scrolls from those synagogues. They took all of these things that they stole and they sent them off to a warehouse in Prague where the furniture and the Torah scrolls were kept, you see the Nazis had a dream of once the war was over, they were going to create a museum to a depraved race, the Jewish people. And the centerpiece of this museum, which was going to include all of the furnishings and things that they stole, the centerpiece was to have been the Torah scrolls of the Jewish communities of Czechoslovakia. Well, this community of Kolin, someone in the community, saw what was happening and what was about to happen. And so they got these nine pieces of furniture and they sent them to a synagogue in Switzerland for safekeeping for, during the war. And the goal was that once the war was over, they would be able to reclaim them and bring them back. Well, the war ended, but no, only 44 people from Colleen survived and no one went to Switzerland to reclaim that furniture. So it languished there in a synagogue in Switzerland for over 40 years until the mid 1980s, when we here at Temple Emmanuel in Denver were building our new chapel that you see in front of you. And Rabbi Foster, a rabbi emeritus, chanced upon an article in a magazine about this furniture. You see that community in Switzerland decided eventually to put it up for sale because they, wanted, they encountered some hard times. So Rabbi Foster went to Switzerland, saw the furniture, bought it, brought it back here to Denver, and we built this beautiful chapel around it. 
And then we said, we need something to put in this ark. We had two Torah scrolls already, uh, in addition to the ones that are in our sanctuary. But we wrote to the Westminster Synagogue in London, England. You see, when this warehouse was discovered that the Nazis wanted to create this, uh, this museum out of, there were literally thousands upon thousands of Torah scrolls that had been stolen by the Nazis. Some were desecrated beyond repair, but some had a semblance of wholeness. And so they were repaired and lovingly sent to the Westminster Synagogue in London, England, where they were cataloged and numbered again. And then they were sent to congregations around the world. So we reached out when we received this beautiful ark to the Westminster Synagogue and said, perchance, do you have a scroll from Colleen? And they did. And so if you look now in our ark, the scroll on the right is a scroll from the community of Colleen. And you can see it, it's a little taller. It's also much older and it's not, a it's, it's not in great condition. So we don't read from it, but we also don't just put it in a display case. We take it out every Shabbat morning that we, are, that we can, or we tell it story as we're doing right now. And we symbolically pass it from generation to generation. If you'll notice on the, on the cover of this Torah, it, it, there's a map and it starts in Czechoslovakia. And from there it goes to London and there it goes to New York and there it goes to Denver. That has been its journey. And it is one of our most prized possessions in our congregation. And so every morning when a child becomes a bar or bat mitzvah on a Shabbat morning, we tell its story. And then we invite members of the family from generation to generation to come on screen and to, to pass it today symbolically, but actually. So at this point, I want to call on Pat and Tony Phillips and Debbie and Russell Bialki and Leslie Phillips and Brent Bialki and Sister Anna and of course Mia to come on the screen so that we might pass this, this Torah, this symbolic Torah from generation to generation. And Pat and Tony, you are going to go first. Go ahead. Go ahead. Our, Our hearts, hearts are one on this joyous day as you commit yourself to a life of Torah, a life we pray filled with wisdom, caring, and right action. Debbie and Russell. We, we pray, pray that, that you will grow each day, each day in, in compassion, compassion for the needy, in concern, concern for the stranger, stranger in love of all people. Leslie? May the one who blessed our ancestors, Abraham and Sarah, Isaac and Rebecca, Jacob and Rachel and Leah, bless you on your becoming bat mitzvah. Brent? May you grow with strength and courage, with vision and sensitivity, and may you always be certain of our love. Amen. Lips with 
Beautiful. So before we begin the process of reading this week's Torah portion, I want to say a few words. I know there's some people on this call who may not be familiar with what's happening here. So let me sort of tell you a little bit. If we were able to be together, oh, the big if for the past 11 months, we would be in our chapel or our sanctuary standing in front of a Torah scroll, a Hebrew Sefer Torah, and Mia would be reading from the scroll, but unfortunately we can't be, but we still wanted you to see what a Torah scroll looked like. So what you see in front of you is a beautiful photograph of a Torah scroll. And this is a scroll. It is written on parchment by a scribe. It contains the first five books of the Bible, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. And during the course of a year, a cycle, the Jewish community reads the entire Torah, or at least sections from different, different parts of the Torah in order from beginning to end. And then when we finish, we start all over again because of course, learning never ends. So each week we have a Torah portion and Mia is gonna tell us about this week's Torah portion in just a moment. But before she does a couple other things to look at. Number one, you see the little finger. Uh, it's called a yad, which in Hebrew means hand. That's a pointer. And we use a yad or a pointer when we read from the Torah, because we don't want to, we want to treat it with reverence. We also don't want the oil from our fingers to smudge the ink. This is written by a scribe on parchment the same way today as it has been for thousands and thousands of years. Now, you're not allowed to read from the Torah unless you are a Jewish or B, uh, the age of bar or bat mitzvah or over. So 13 years old. And this is the first of what we hope will be many times that Mia will be reading from the Torah. And it's not easy to do. It's very hard. She has been working, trust me, very, very diligently on this moment. Now there's no vowels. There are no vowels and there are no, there's no punctuation in a Torah scroll. It's written in a very ancient form. There's also no musical notes. So you really have to know what you are doing and work hard. In addition to reading from the Torah, we also invite people up, and I use that word up deliberately, for an honor. And the word for calling, being called up is aliyah, which is an ascension to go up. It's considered a physical as well as a spiritual ascension. It is an honor and there is a blessing. So we'll be calling up members of Mia's family for the honor of aliyah. But before we do, Mia, could you tell us a little bit about this week's Torah portion? The Torah portion for this Shabbat is Mishpatim from the book of Exodus. In this Torah portion, Moses continues to instruct the Israelites in all of the laws of their covenant with God. I will be reading from chapter 23, verses 1 through 12. Beautiful. So for the honor of the first Aliyah, we call Torah blessers Aunt Emily and Uncle Jonah uh, for the blessing before. We're also calling up on Uncle, Aunt Hillary and Uncle Mike and Uncle Eric and Aunt Melinda and Uncle David and Aunt Sarah. But Emily and Jonah, you are doing the blessing before. Go right ahead. And as well as, excuse me, Eliana and Evelyn, I can't forget. Baruch <laughs> Baruch Adonai Hamvarach Le'olam Ba'ed Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Asher Bachar Banu Mikol Ha'amim V'na'atan Lanu Et Torato Baruch Ata Adonai Noten HaTorah Amen Amen Tisach Shem Ashav Al Tashet Yarcha Im Rasha Liot Eid Hamas Lotie Ahare Rabim Lira Ot Velo Velo Tach Velo Hamats Lotire Eid Hamas Lotihia. 
Lotad Arborivo. You must not carry false rumors. You shall not join hands with the guilty to act as a malicious witness. You shall neither side with the mighty to do wrong. You shall not give perverse testimony in a dispute so as to pervert it in favor of the mighty, nor shall you show deference to a poor person in a dispute. Beautiful. Hillary and Mike, you are going to do the post blessing. Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu melech haolam, asher nantan manu torat emet, bechaye olam nanta bitochinu, baruch atah Adonai, notain ha torah. Amen. Hugs, virtual hugs to the bat mitzvah. Come on, all the aunts and uncles. All right. For the honor of our second aliyah, we invite up Pat and Tony Phillips and Debbie and Russell Bialki. And Pat and Tony, you're going to do the first blessing. Baruch Baruch start again. Baruch 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 atah Adonai, Eloheinu melech olam, asher b'charbonu mikol ha'amin, v'tan lanu et torato, baruch atah Adonai, notein ha'torah. Amen. Amen. Ki tifga shor oivcha ochamoro to'e ha'shev teshivenu lo. Ki tire chamor sona aha, rovets tahat masa o vachadalta, me azov lo azov ta azov imo. Lo ta te mishpat evyon ha berivo. When you encounter your enemy's ox or donkey wandering, you must take it back. When you see the donkey of your enemy lying under its burden, and would refrain from raising it, you must nevertheless help raise it. You shall not subvert the rights of your needy in their disputes. Go ahead. Baruchu Adonai Hambo. No, wait, 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 wait. Hold on. We need the second blessing from Pat and Tony. Go ahead. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu malkolam asher natan lanu Torah emet Amen. Grandparents, hugs and kisses to the bat mitzvah. Nice. Very nice. And now, Leslie and Brent, come on back uh, for the honor of blessing Torah for the third aliyah for your daughter Mia. It is my pleasure to call up Leslie Phillips and Brent Bialki. Baruch Adonai Hambarach Leolam Ba'ed. Baruch Adonai Hambarach Leolam Ba'ed. Baruch Adonai Eloheinu Asher Bachar Banu Mikol Hamim. Benatan Lanu Et Torato. Baruch Adonai Noti HaTorah. Amen. Amen. Medvar Shekher, Tirhak, Vinaki, Vitsadik, Altaharog, Kilo, Azdik, Rasha, Vishsohad, Lot, Lotika, Kihashohad, Yaver, Pikihim, Vesalif, Divre, Sadikim, Viger, Lo, Tilha, Veatem, Yedatem, Et Nefesh Hager, Ki gerim heitem be'eretz mitzrayim. Keep far from a false charge. Do not bring death on those who are innocent and in the right, for I will not acquit the wrongdoer. Do not take bribes, for bribes blind the clear-sighted and upset the pleas of those who are in the right. You shall not oppress a stranger, for you know the feeling of the stranger having yourselves been strangers in the land of Egypt. We had to do the post blessing for Leslie, finish it out. 
Amen. Hugs and kisses to the bat mitzvah. <laughs> Beautiful. So we're going to take just a moment before Mia, we call you up very dramatically. And we're going to focus on this prayer, this Misha Berach, which is a prayer that means may the one who blessed our ancestors send healing and blessing on those in our lives who are in need of blessing. Let me turn on my original sound. For those who need blessing. And I'm going to be reading a list of names of members of this family and their friends. But if there are others who are in need, if you're watching on the live stream, just say the words, say their names out loud. If you're watching on Facebook and you want to type the names in the chat, please do. So all of us, might ask for God's healing blessing on their behalf. We pray together. Now it is my honor to invite grandparents, siblings, everyone to join us for Mia's final Aliyah, the fourth Aliyah. So it is my great, great honor to invite Pat and Tony and Debbie and Russell and Leslie and Brent and Anna and to call Mia Bialki to both bless and read from the Torah for the very first time as a bat mitzvah, a daughter of the commandments. Tanar Habachura Bar Mitzvah Rifka Devora Badleya Lalia Hatura Baruch Adonai Hamvorach Baruch Adonai Hamvorach Leolam Vaed Amen. 
Amen. Vishishanim tizra et artsecha vasafta et tivuata vishashvi tishmatena untashta the achlu evyone amecha the eat rum to hal hayat hasade kinta asecha le harmecha lize teha yamim Shesha Yamim Ta Ase Ma Aseha Uvayom Hashvi Tish Bot Liman Yanuach Shorha the Hamoreha the Yina Fesh Benamatha the Hager. Six years you shall sow your land and gather in its yield, but in the seventh you shall let it rest and lie fallow. Let the needy among your people eat of it. And what they leave, let the wild beasts eat. You shall do the same with your vineyards and your olive groves. Six days you shall do your work, but on the seventh day you shall cease from labor in order that your ox and your donkey may rest, and that your homeborn slave and the stranger may be refreshed. <laughs> The Haye Olam, Nata Betohenu, Baruch Hata Adonai, no Tain Hatora. Amen. Simon Tavu, Mazel Tavu, Mazel Tav, and Simon Tav, Simon Tav, Hugs and kisses for the Bat Mitzvah. Mazel Tav, and Simon Tav, Simon Tav, Mazel Tav, Mazel Tav, and Simon Tav, yeah, hey, love you. Yeah, love you, yeah, hey, love you. Mazel tov, mazel tov. So Mia, you have spent a lot of time studying this Torah portion, and we want to give you an opportunity now to uh, share your Devar Torah, share the words that you wrote, where you make mishpatim your own. So we call you up now to deliver your Devar Torah. In my portion, mishpatim, we learn how we should always be kind to all of God's creatures, whether human or animal. In Exodus chapter 22, verse 20, it states, you shall not wrong nor oppress a stranger for you were strangers in the land of Egypt. This means that we should always care for and respect everyone, including strangers, and that we should never oppress a stranger. The Jewish value Ahava Ger means love of the stranger in your midst. This is an important value for me and my family. An example of how we care for strangers is how my family and I make bags for the homeless people every winter with things like toothbrushes, toothpaste, socks, packaged snacks, hand sanitizer, water bottles, wipes, and tissues. We do this because even though we don't know these people and they are strangers to us, we still care for them and treat them with kindness because we know they have hard lives. My portion outlining how we should be kind to everyone can apply to all of us. At some point in our lives, we have all been left out or oppressed. I have also experienced the feeling of being left out in my life. In sixth grade, I felt excluded by the people that I thought were my friends. That didn't make me feel good and taught me the lesson to always smile and show kindness to people at school, even if they don't show kindness to me. I also try to help others who feel left out so they don't have to feel what I did. Also in my portion, it says, when you see your enemy's animal that has fallen down and your enemy won't raise it, you need to raise it. It is not fair to let an animal suffer even if it belongs to your enemy because that is not the animal's fault. This reflects the important Jewish value of Zar Ba'alei Chaim, understanding and preventing the pain of living creatures by always respecting animals no matter who they belong to. This applies to my life because we rescue all of our animals. Over the years, we have rescued three dogs and two guinea pigs. All of our animals have either been physically harmed or neglected by others. This is my personal example of caring for other people's animals when they don't care for them. In my future, I still want to rescue all of my animals. All of these are examples of how I live by the words of my portion. I would like to thank my parents for helping me and pushing me to work hard and never give up. 
I would also like to thank my sister, Anna, for helping me practice. You're such a good and fun sister to me, and I'm so lucky to have you. Thank you to all of my grandparents and aunts and uncles for supporting me and loving me through everything in my life. Thank you to my best friend, Belly Ulitsky, for always being there for me and helping me through preparing for my bat mitzvah and everything else in my life. Thank you for all the fun times, including Starbucks trips together, walking around just to rant to each other and scream, and dancing around with blankets over our heads late at night. I can't imagine a day of my life without you. Thank you, Canner Sachs, for making this process easier for me emotionally. And Rabbi Black, thank you for helping me write my speech. Thank you, Rabbi Becker, for tutoring me and helping me study and learn Hebrew. Mia, let's do the Shehechianu in your packet. Amen. Can you read it in English? Praise to you, Adonai, our God, sovereign of the universe, for giving us life, for sustaining us, and for enabling us to reach this season. Amen. Amen. Beautiful, beautiful job. Take a deep breath. You can have a sip of water if you want. Oh, there's the smile. Back. Love the smile. <laughs> yeah, that makes me so happy. Mia, you did such a beautiful job this morning. I know this was a long road for you. I know that um, you, found, you spent a lot of time trying to figure out where you personally could find meaning in this process. And I know that that conversation is ongoing. That's the beauty of what it means to be part of the Jewish faith and the Jewish people is that that's a question that we get to continue to explore and grow and struggle with and figure out for however however long you need to uh, to feel like it is meaningful for you. But I just want to say that on, be on behalf of the clergy, and I'm sure Rabbi Black is going to say this as well, you, you did such a beautiful job, right? Despite despite the worries and despite the challenge, you rose to this occasion and you led us in prayer and you read from Torah and you taught us something that was important to you. That's amazing. That even in the midst of trying to figure out how this was going to work for you, you nevertheless brought all of those gifts to the table. So thank you. Thank you for that. Really beautiful. Now it is my turn to present you with gifts as well on behalf of the congregation and as a thank you for everything that I just said. So Mia, one of the first gifts that you'll receive from us is a teudat bat mitzvah, a bat mitzvah certificate. Oh, and here it's come. Look at that. How beautiful is that? And on that bat mitzvah certificate will be your name in English and in Hebrew um, as w and the date and the Torah portion on uh, which you became a bat mitzvah but it also has a blessing on it in the tree. And if you look at the words in the tree, it says, blessed are you Adonai our God, who commands us to engage with words of Torah. And yet the word that's actually in Hebrew in the leaves of the tree is la'asok bedivrei Torah. And what that really means, engage is a little bit of a soft, soft translation of that blessing. What that really means is who commands us to struggle with Torah. As we just talked about, like that, you took that responsibility so seriously in this moment. And I really hope for you, Mia, that you take this certificate and keep it not only because it's pretty and not only because it reminds you of a job very, very well done today, but also because it reminds you of what the fundamental purpose is of this entire process, which is to struggle for yourself with Torah. It is not easy for anyone. And yet, that is what we are commanded to do. So in addition to this certificate, we have um, a financial gift toward travel to Israel uh, upon completion of our confirmation program at Temple. And we have also planted a tree in Israel in honor of your bat mitzvah um, so that you continue to help us make that place green and growing. We have gifts from our brotherhood and sisterhood, a kiddush cup and a mezuzah, so that you can always have a Jewish home wherever you are. 
We have a bag of goodies from our Temple Youth Group, the Friedman Club, so that you always remember that Temple is fun. And then, uh, last but not least, we have a book for you. Um, it is a Torah commentary for teens called Text Messages. And on the inside front cover, each of the clergy will have written you a nice note about what a pleasure it's been to work with you in this process. So one last thing that I'm going to say. When we looked at your portion for the first time, there is a lot of stuff in it. There's a lot of laws and they just come really fast, one right after the other, boom, 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 boom. And we talked about how this is the aftermath of the 10 commandments. Last week we read the 10 commandments, which are the big 10. And then this week we get pretty much everything else, almost, of our 613 commandments. And Mia, one of the things, as we've said, that I really appreciate about how you approach this process is that you were able to hold the big questions and the small details together at the same time. That is not easy for most people. You knew that you were still working on the big questions, but you also were able to engage in the small details. And that's a gift for every part of your life. So Mia, I just, I hope that you continue to be proud of your fortitude, your poise, your intellect, and your ability to bring your personality into everything that you do. So mazel tov. And I can't wait to keep learning with you whatever that looks like for many years to come. Now I'm going to invite your parents to come and say some nice words. And uh, you are going to listen to them and maybe even smile at them as well. Mia, wow, I'm uh, amazed at how well you did. Um, it was all beautiful, uh, mazel tov. There, there are many emotions and words I could use to describe this milestone, uh, but one stands out to me, proud. Um, I'm very proud of what you accomplished to prepare for this special day. Um, this day represents the culmination of your efforts and time over many years. The journey was long and exhausting, and it was exacerbated by the pandemic, but you persevered until the end. While the journey was primarily educational and spiritual, I hope it was meaningful and you found joy along the way. Joy learning about the Jewish values, joy learning how to write and speak Hebrew, and joy building relationships with the Jewish community. I also hope you continue to live your life following the Jewish values, values such as respect, kindness, trustworthiness, health, the proper treatment of animals, and having a good moral compass to guide you and point you in the right direction when you're feeling lost or need help. As one who is technically not Jewish, but surrounded by Judaism and supportive of Jewish values and beliefs, I'm not familiar with all the implications and technicalities of this special day. However, I do understand that this coming of age ceremony marks your entrance into adulthood, according to Jewish traditions. Now, while I personally think you have a lot to learn before I fully consider you an adult, I have been filled with joy and pride as I have watched you grow into a beautiful young adult over the past couple of years. You are caring, considerate, loving, fun, smart, and a little bit sassy, perhaps a lot of bit sassy. And I hope I continue to see these traits from you in the future as you navigate your young adulthood. I do not know what role Judaism will play in your future. That is up to you. But I hope you continue to live your life following the Jewish values and celebrating some of the Jewish traditions. And I will conclude this parent blessing by providing you reassurance that mom and I will always be by your side and to love and to, sorry, always be by your side to support and love you through the ups and downs of your wonderful life ahead of you. Mazel tov, Mia. Well, since I've been crying before this started, hopefully I can <laughs> hold it together here. My dearest Mia, your name means mine and you are. You're the whole world to your dad and me. Costco tissues here, excuse me. Your Hebrew names are after your grandmothers, both symbols of strength and fierce love, which I hope you will emulate in your life. I fervently wish and hope so many things for you. I hope that you're bold. I hope that you're daring. I hope that you're true. 
I hope you're defiant, though not always with your dad and me. I hope that whatever paths you choose in life, and there will be many, that you choose them with grace and passion and love. I hope that you live and learn. I hope that you fail and get back up again. I hope that you do what you love and with whom you love. And I hope you know that while life may not always be easy, it will be worth it to both struggle and rejoice. I hope you will work hard for something you really want and deservingly get whatever that is. I hope one day you'll impart your sense of justice, both to members of the animal kingdom and to humankind, to your own family. I hope you'll make latkes and hamantashen and celebrate Passover like we do. I hope you'll show your love for others through food the Jewish way. I hope that you'll wonder and be eager to learn, and I hope you will never stop being true to who you are and what you value, which will change as you grow older. And finally, I hope you know how many people love you and are proud of you on this momentous day. I love you. Oops, sorry. Beautiful. So me, I wanna say a couple words to you right now too. First of all, I wanna echo what your parents and what Cantor Sachs has said, we are extraordinarily proud of you. And we are proud of several things. Number one, the way that you learned and demonstrated what you've learned, but also the way that you have made this celebration, albeit as bizarre as it is on Zoom, and it is bizarre even though it's become the norm over the past several months, we can't wait till we can go back, but you've made it yours. You said, these are the boundaries that I want to work within. And we respected that and we have done that. So there's a, there's a Hebrew phrase, yasher kochech, which means may you be strengthened and may you strengthen others by your resolve. Mia, you are someone who is, you are a very strong and a very sensitive person all at the same time. And we all see that and we all know that about you. Um, we know that you care deeply about others. And we also know that there are times when you might be a little bit afraid for people to see what's really going on inside, which is why I always kid you about not smiling. Ah, I got a smile. That was great. Um, because, you know, as you shared so poignantly in your Devar Torah, you've been hurt. And, and we all have been hurt. And being a sixth grade girl, oh my gosh, um, as the father of, of a daughter, I understand what that was like. And it, and it does get better, I promise you. I, I really do. It does get better. That does happen. But more than that, you your Torah portion, Mishpatim, is all about fairness and all about what is right. And there's a passage that you chanted so beautifully um, in chapter 23, uh, verses 1, 2, and 3. And I want to read it to you. It says, you shall not carry false rumors. In other words, you shouldn't gossip. You shall not join hands with the guilty to act as a malicious witness. So don't be mean to other people. And then it says, don't side with the mighty to do wrong. And then it says, don't show deference, don't favor the powerless or the poor in the dispute. In other words, justice and being fair is something that goes on every side. You don't only respect, you don't only not show favoritism to the wealthy and the powerful, but you also be careful, you have to be careful not to allow your compassion to also disrupt justice. The Torah, as you've learned and as you've taught us, is all about finding ways that we can all live together. It is a remarkable document when you unpack it because it teaches us that we live in a world that is not chaotic. There's a reason for us to be here. And so I look at you, I look at you and I look at the way that you've wrestled with Torah, as Cantor said so beautifully. I look at the way that you have embraced your tradition and you've allowed yourself to be part of something that goes back thousands of years and God willing will continue thousands of years in the future. So thank you. I wanna thank you also, Mia. Thank you for your hard work. Thank you for the depth of your intellect. Thank you for your stubbornness and your willingness to try things that might take you out of your comfort zone. We appreciate it, we see it, and we love that in you. So I want to call the cantor back so that we might ask God's blessing upon you now in words of Torah from which you chanted and which you taught us so beautifully. 
Can you hear that son? May it be God's will. May God bless you and may God watch over you. May God's presence shine upon you, in you, and through you, and may God's grace continue to be a part of your life. Yeah. May God's presence shine upon you, and may, may you see the face of God in every person, every animal, every encounter, and may you know, and may you teach shalom, wholeness, fulfillment, and peace, and let us all say amen. And so now, with this love in our hearts, we move to the conclusion of our ceremony as we rise as we are able physically or spiritually for Aleinu. Aleinu l'shabeach l'adon hakol atet gedula le'yotzer b'reshit shelo asanu kegoye aratzot velo salmanu kemishpachot ha'adama shelo sam chelkenu kahem vegor aleinu kechol hamonam Vanachnu korim, umishtachavim umodim, lifne melech malche hamlachim, hakadosh baruchu. And now we take some time and we remember. We remember those people who but yesterday were a part of our lives and who are no longer with us. We remember the martyrs of our people and all people. As we say these words that link generation to generation, the words of the mourners Kaddish. And on this Shabbat, we are aware of members of this beautiful family who have been taken from us. Sue Martin, Robert Wohl, Bob Ag, and Bobby Kramer. And we say, Zichronam Levracha, may their memories be for an eternal blessing. And if there are others for whom Kaddish is being said, if you want to write them in the chat, if you're on Facebook, or say the names out loud. And if you are in the first 30 days or the first 11 months of a mourning period, or observing a yard site, the anniversary of a death on the Shabbat, I ask you to rise as you are able, either physically or spiritually. And we stand with you in solidarity as we recite words that bind generation to generation, the words of the mourners Kaddish. Yit gadal v'yit kadash shemei rabba b'alma divra chirute v'yamlich malchute b'chayi chon u'v'yom echon u'v'chayi d'chol b'yit Yisrael b'agala u'v'zman kari v'imru. Amen. Yehi shemei rabba mevarach le'alam u'lalmei almaya yit barach v'yishtabach v'yit pa'ar v'yit romam v'yit nasei Vit hadar vit alevit halal shmid kud shabrihu. Le ela min kol birchata, the shirata, tushbechata, the nechemata, da amiran bi alma vimru, amen. Yehe shlamaraba min shmaya, the chayim, aleinu va al kol Yisrael, vimru amen, o se shalom im romav, hu ya a se shalom, aleinu, va al kol Yisrael. Vimru Amen. And may the source of peace send peace to all who mourn and comfort to all who are bereaved here among us, wherever they may be. And let us say Amen. Oh,
we prepare to finish our service this morning with words of joy, with words of song, as we celebrate this amazing bat mitzvah and this beautiful family, we say, Hava Nashira Shir Hallelujah, let us sing a song to God. God of every generation, generations past, those yet to come, once again, we have come together to celebrate, to celebrate this young woman, this beautiful family, and to celebrate the gift of Shabbat and community that exists even when we're in many, many different places. God, we thank you for this gift of Shabbat that helps us to put our lives in perspective if we just allow it to do so. And we ask your blessing. Bruchim hayinu bavoenu, bruchim mihiebet seitenu. Blessed were we in coming here. Blessed may we be as we go forth for this time and always. Amen. Shabbat shalom and mazel tov.